let's talk about filament for a minute. So here we have two types of PLA. This is just your brand X, no color uh, PLA. And here we have some wood fill. Now, both of these have something in common in the fact that they are pretty much all natural, whatever that means. But they're derived from, uh, PLA is derived from plants, basically uh, sugar cane or corn. PLA is polylactic acid. It's biodegradable, and that's good because we make a lot of waste in 3D printing. You know, we have a lot of junk parts or things that we're no longer gonna use and we toss. Uh, so if you have a very hot compost heap, so what they call an industrial compost, uh, this will get soft enough in the compost heap that the bacteria can break it down and it's biodegradable. Um, and the fact that it can do that, you know, landfills get pretty warm as well. So there's no way this stuff is going to last for 10,000 years in a landfill like most other plastics. Uh, so as far as your 3D printing habit uh, not being harmful to the environment, PLA is the way to go. And it's also uh, a very strong uh, and capable filament. The wood fill stuff um, tends to be, uh, has better layer adhesion. I think that's what's going on. There's a video which I'll link um, where they made a boat propeller and the wood fill ended up being the strongest of all the, the plastics that they used. And I think it's just because of the, the sort of roughness that uh, comes from the wood particles, just make the layers uh, bond together a little better. So yeah, PLA, fantastic um, filament. And you'll never have a problem, at least I've never had a problem with it soaking up water um, out of the atmosphere. Instead, what can happen is if you have uh, your retraction distance too uh, high, you can get an air bubble into your melt chamber. So when you, you know, unretract the filament, you end up pushing that air bubble through first, which makes the, you know, the classic snap, crackle, pop sounds coming out of your nozzle. But um, it's not because the PLA soaked up water from the atmosphere. This is hygrophobic. So it does not absorb that water and you just don't have that problem. I don't even know why it comes sealed in uh, plastic with the desiccant because it really isn't critical as far as my experience goes. But all of these other filaments here all share one thing in common and that is the fact that they are all hygroscopic. So they soak up water straight out of the air like crazy and it can lead to really poor print quality. So I've had big problems printing with this orange PLA because of that, or I'm sorry, orange ABS. This is just cheap, cheap uh, filament coming from China. Actually, I don't have any brand name filament here. All this is cheap stuff from China. Here we have some TPU flexible uh, filament also soaks up water, it makes for the, the a noticeable difference in print uh, quality. And it's also more difficult. You have less uh, adhesion to the bed. You just, you get more problems. So uh, hips, very hygroscopic. Uh, Polycarbonate, I have not printed with this. Extremely hygroscopic from what I read and also nylon, same problem. So um, really, as soon as you get into the more exotic plastics with 3D printing, you absolutely need a drying solution. You need to be able to, uh, to dry out your filament. So, the thing is, you know, it's going to be sitting on your printer in the open air. It's going to soak up water out of the atmosphere and um, you're going to need to get that water back out. So there's a number of products for sale on uh, online that you can get from like, you know, known <laughs> 3D printer supplier places. And basically what they are is glorified uh, food dehydrators and they, um, they dry your filament out. The other solution, of course, is to stick these into your oven at uh, around 200 degrees. But the problem is right around 200 degrees, well, that's the melting point for PLA. So, uh, you know, you start to get where your, your plastic is getting pretty soft. So you don't want to go much higher than 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And that would be actually 212 degrees Fahrenheit is about what you want because that is the boiling point of water. So that's 100 degrees C, obviously. Um, and you're basically boiling the water out of your filament. Um, so that's you know pretty easy to do, just stick it in your home oven, right? If your home oven, now I've, I've moved three different times since I started 3D printing, and so I've had three different home ovens to try this on, and only one of them um, had reliable heat at around 200 degrees. So I would use my little uh, you know infrared thermometer, this thing right here. Uh, to uh, basically tell how, how hot the oven was without touching the oven. And yeah, only one of my ovens ever got to a reliable temperature. So those solutions that are for sale, the, the glorified food dehydrators, um, they're really quite attractive if you think about it. 
but they cost too much. They cost like $150, $200. It's like, how can just the unit that, uses, that you use to, do, to dry your filament cost as much as your printer if you're getting like an Ender 3, right? That just seems absurd to me. So I went looking online and I found a food dehydrator for sale at Walmart for $30 and it's 600 watt. Uh, it's this thing right here. Now this is just what the remains of the plastic shell, but it'll give you an idea if you go buy it, what you're gonna get. Uh, and this thing had great reviews as far as being a food dehydrator. But if you look right here on the, uh, on the lid, the dial goes up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees C. So that is not high enough. And I should have realized that problem before I embarked upon my project. But I'm pretty proud of this project and there might still be a chance to, to save the project and get it to work because at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not, I'm not sufficiently drying out the foam. So this is a bit of the foam which came uh, as the packaging material for one of my 3D printers. And this is a 10 inch form tube. Uh, it's used for pouring concrete for like post holes. And you can get a tube like this uh, in the four foot length for like $10 at your local home goods store. So here is my uh, filament dryer based on that food dehydrator. So I took the guts out of the food dehydrator and you can see that's what, what is right there. That includes all of the heating elements and the protection around the heating elements, all the stuff that's gonna get hot. I did not print any of that. What I did print is this sort of outer shell that's, the, uh, that's printed out of ABS, which is the same plastic that the original food dehydrator was, uh, was made out of. So um, yeah, it, it works quite well. You can see here there's a tube and I have this little uh, TPU printed boot uh, that seals to the lid there. So the tube gets the hot air blasted down it. It pops out the bottom here, circulates up the side and gets sucked in to the uh, heater fan element here through these side vents. So yeah, my design works great, uh, gets great airflow, but like I said, it does not get hot enough. So let's take this thing apart and see if there's anything I can do uh, to potentially up that, uh, that temperature. I need to get what, 60 degrees warmer, well, 62 degrees warmer than, I'm currently getting 148, 150 degrees with it the way that it is, but I, I would really like to get to 212 degrees. Um, so let's, uh, let's look inside this thing. All right, well, here is my uh, sort of top unit. We can see the, uh, the coil there, um, but I don't really see anything that I could adjust. Um, you know, I really, I'm gonna have to do some research. Maybe there's some electronics experts out there that can tell me whether or not I can soup this thing up. Um, I'll give you guys a close up view here in a second. Okay, so here's what this thing looks like on the inside. We can see the heating elements here with the shielding and this is the fan. And so the fan just sort of soaks or pulls air from inside, from up the center tube here from that vent um, and blows it out to the edges. Um, so I guess the hot air does flow outwards and then down. Um, and so that's all we're seeing here on this side is basically heating elements. Um, if we're looking through the fan, I think we're just gonna see, I don't know if that pulls off. But yeah, I'm just seeing that, that same coil uh, right there through the fan and then probably a fan motor. So really just a simple circuit here, um, probably just an AC deal. Oh, there go all my small parts. But um, yeah, there's the coil. I don't, this must be the fan motor. So um, I don't know if there's anything I can do to get this thing hot enough. I kind of don't think that it's salvageable as a project. I'm going to need to do it all over again uh, with a better donor unit, with a better food dehydrator that gets up to temperature. So there it is, uh, another sort of successful failure of a project. Um, my design for flowing the air using this uh, cheap sauna tube. The sauna tube was like 10 bucks. The, uh, this is packaging that came in my 3D printer kit. Uh, it was like 30 bucks for that roll of um, ABS filament. You know, I had a roll of TPU. So all told, I'm into this thing, uh, I would say about 60 bucks or so, um, maybe 70 bucks, which is half the price to get the very big, 
uh, food dehydrator version, which I just think is so much uglier. It's so much larger than it needs to be. This is much closer to the uh, the circumference, or I'm sorry, the diameter of a, of a roll of filament. So instead of having all that extra wasted space, uh, this is much more compact. So there were a lot of benefits to this design, and unfortunately, I just started with the wrong the wrong donor unit. I should have not used this cheapo one. So part two, I guess. I don't know when I'll get to it, but uh, I need to redo this project because I definitely need dry filament. I am going to be moving on to the higher temperature uh, and usually higher strength or, you know, they've got better mechanical qualities than the ABS. Oh, I'm sorry, than the, than the PLA. So I'm going to be moving to the higher temperature filament. So I need a food dehydrator and also a, um, a sort of good sealing solution. And I have one way that I sort of seal and keep my filament dry, but um, I'm going to need to come up with, you know, much larger solution than that. So big shout out to all of these Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason that I make this channel. So I thank you very much. And if you want to help uh, me to keep making this channel, uh, you can become a Patreon supporter as well uh, by following the link right here. Alternately, hey, go watch one of my other videos or, you know, video playlists. I'll put that right here. And that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.